Hello and welcome to What's New in Enterprise Maps. My name is Dylan Thomas. I'm on the Google Enterprise Maps team and joining me today is Ajay Hamnani. Thanks Dylan, thanks for having me. No problem. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is uh, what the team has released over the past 90 days and, and the uh, highlights thereof. So as a customer, you may know that you get to a preview of uh, what we're going to be working on in the product roadmap. And we like to do a bit of a retrospective and see what's cool that we uh, released in the past 90 days. We're going to look at three products. We're going to look at five features. Uh, on the Maps Engine side, we're going to look at how to get data into Maps Engine via the API some improvements in the styling and the uh, presentation of data, and finally, some image referencing. Then we're going to switch gears, look at the Places API, where we've got some improvements in autocomplete, and we're going to wrap it up with a brand new app. So Ajay, do you want to start off with the uh, Maps Engine data import? Sure, Dylan. So first things first, uh, the Maps Engine API has been able to do a few things, allow uh -huh. us to look at data, yep. ask questions against uh, data. Yep. And now uh, the API has been extended to allow us to be able to get data into our Maps Engine account. So we used to be able to do it, well, we could uh, feature by feature, right? Like add a feature, update exactly. a feature. But you're talking about bulk upload. Right, right? exactly. Okay getting tables in, getting raster imagery in, even creating an empty table in. So I'm specifically going to talk about two uh, features right here. Uh, the first one gives us the ability to upload new data sources through the API. This could work for vector uh -huh. as well as rasters. Uh -huh. uh, the second allows us to create a new empty vector table so that you know after, after which you'll be able to use the batch insert or batch update to periodically insert records into um, the table. So the, the missing the missing piece, as far as our partners and customers were concerned with, was was the initial creation step. Create that empty thing, right? To start doing the inserts, exactly, right? right? Yeah. And I have a demo prepared for each of these. I'm going to jump into it right away. Uh, I'm going to be using the OAuth playground for running these demos, so that I can share what the request looks like yeah. and what the response object looks okay. like. But to get things started, first, you need to specify the scope. And so I'm going to use the read-write scope right here, authorize the API, and get the OAuth token running. Right, so once that's done, I've got something prepared over here. I'm going to start with the create new empty table example. And so take a look at the um, endpoint request. So that's www.googleapis.com slash maps engine slash v1 slash tables. Uh -huh. I'm going to dump that. Ve vector into, only, right? Right, exactly okay. that. And that's a post request. So I'm going to change this to post. And in the request body right here, I've prepared this. So one of the things that you'll see in the request body is the project ID. And this you can easily get by running one of the other API requests against your can you, account. You can get this from the uh, UI as well if you exactly really that. need to, right? Yeah, right. OK. And the other things are typical things that you would have entered even if you had created or uploaded a table directly over the console, uh -huh. table name, description, and so on and so forth. So all that good stuff's right here. Uh, over at the last few lines, is basically the schema of the table. Imagine creating a table inside a database. Sure. You would specify the column, so exactly the attributes here. Okay. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and close this and run this query. Or right, <laughs> and over the results side of things, you will see the schema that I created the table with, along with the asset ID that's that gets created and assigned to this new asset, which is a vector table. And I'm going to go into the Maps Engine console and display the data sources. So for partners and customers who are building integrations between their systems and Maps Engine, this really just is the, the, was the missing piece that exactly that. filled the gap, right? Right. And, and uh, here, I believe, is the table that we just created. There we go. This is the schema and um, details about the metadata about the table. Uh, one more thing I wanted to bring to everyone's attention is the fact that with this request, I had created the table using the same name as uh, I had tried last night. Right. And so I end up with two or more tables with the <laughs> same name, which is not a problem because they all have different asset IDs. But come the time when you need to search through your inventory, that could be it's a, a bit difficult. Cumbersome. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So that's one watch point you want to take into account. So we had a bit of a laugh about this earlier. We called it the RJ rule, which is, yeah, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> don't, re don't name things the same. Yes. 
So the second thing you were going to look at was a vector and raster oriented, which is bulk upload of data, right? Exactly that. And so I have something prepared right here. So the main request changes a little. Um, again, I'm going to be using OAuth Playground to send the request. So still uh, starting with the same uh, domain, www.googleapis.com slash maps engine slash v1 slash table slash upload, uh -huh. right? And so the request body also changes a little. You'll still have the usual suspects like the table name, table description, and so on and so forth. But apart from that, since here this request is talking about uploading a yeah. data source, I need to be more specific with what makes up this data source. Yep. Right. And so here is a list of the files that make up this particular vector data source. And again, just to reiterate, you're using a shapefile vector base, but of course you can upload images here too. Exactly right? that, the, yeah. right. This is just example showing a vector, but you can do that with, with imagery as well. The other uh, thing about the upload functionality is that it happens in two steps. Yeah. In this first step, I'm just describing what the data source looks like. It's made up of four files. And in the st second step, I'll be uploading the files one by one. So it's really exactly it's exactly like using the I mean the same steps as in the UI, right? Just exactly metadata, upload the data, mm -hmm. same thing. Right. So go ahead and send the request. And again, uh, like expected, you will see some of the um, details that you had included in the metadata during the request. And so here is a list of all the files that's yeah. going to be um, making part of the upload. Uh, one other thing that you need to take a good look at is right here is the asset ID that gets created. Because in your upload step, you yeah, will need right. to specify which asset ID am I uploading this file for. Kinda. So in your script or code, that's the that's the single piece of information. Exactly. That. Sure and I'm get, just going right? to quickly bring up the doc and show you the request, what the request looks like. There yeah. we go. And right here is where you're expected to enter the Right, asset right, ID. OK. Um, and we should just add that uh, the uh, Maps Developer Relations team did a great video. This is Josh Livney and Mark McDonald did one in mid-December. So if you look for importing data into Google Maps Engine, if you look for that, uh, you'll see a video that has uh, pointers to some great code samples using the Python OAuth library, or excuse me, the, the client library from Google. Uh, so if you want more about this in particular, this is uh, this is the place to look for details. Thanks. So should we uh, switch gears now and look at the, uh, I think, the second item we wanted to cover sure. now was uh, some styling. There's been great improvement in the styling aspect, especially for vector styles. Uh -huh. And so this basically goes into you know creating richer cartography, beautiful yeah. maps, more informative. And so I have a short, short demo right here to share. Let me pull that up. I'm going to use an existing data source that I uploaded again last night. Here's a data source that has polylines describing the various rivers and mm -hmm. um, lakes, I believe. And so what I'm going to do is create a style layer. Just give it a new name. And as I create the first display rule, give it a name. Over here, what you'll notice are two main improvements. First is the ability to choose various kinds of symbologies for mm -hmm. displaying the lines on top of the base map tiles. So let me stick with this, and maybe I change the color into something more visible right here. And the other cool thing is the ability to display one of the attribute values uh -huh. as a label on top of the geometry, in this case, which is a polyline. So I'm going to choose the name attribute. And the color stays as black. I'm going to choose a very obvious <laughs> outline. So it, it so it's the rule. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, but we're doing a demo, right? Right, exactly <laughs> that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and apply this. And let's see how that plays out. And so obviously here, this is not, I mean, if you want to customize the Google base map, you can still do that using the uh, the existing approach, of applying styles to the Google base map. But clearly, this is working with your data that's being overlaid on top of that. Exactly that. And so now, as you can see, um, the labels that come out from the name attribute are being displayed on as labels on top of the geometry. And in fact, along the geometry as well, which is kind of nice, right? Right, exactly that. Excellent. So we've got uh, new line styles and new labels. And this is kind of on that continuous path we're trying to get from uh, where we started with, the sort of the minimum viable set of, uh, of uh, symbology. 
and slowly getting better and better. And I think our goal is basically to have some kind of parity in terms of the beautiful map with the consumer experience as well, just so it looks, it all looks good. Um, okay, well, uh, I think the next item and the last thing for Maps Engine we were covering was the image referencing tool. Right, and so with the image referencing tool, the idea is pretty simple. You're able to upload a JPEG that has zero georeferencing. Uh, I'm imagining in my mind a floor plan, let's say, yep. where you need to place uh, on top of the base map tiles, mm -hmm. right? And so with the absence of georeferencing, this tool allows you to kind of align it with the base map tiles. And so I'm going to do that right here with one of the data sources that I have existing. Right, so this is the um, floor plan JPEG image that I uploaded last night. and. Um, with the upload feature now, there is this setting that you can choose where you can say, I want to manually align this okay. imagery yeah. data source. And so that's what I've done. So when you choose that, what you have here in the data details page is a link that allows you to open up the alignment tool. So I'm going to go into that. First things first, uh, this alignment tools works on the ba works based on three anchors that are attached to the image. And you you can feel free to move around these anchors however yeah. you want it. Once you've chosen the anchors, the next step will be to align them wherever you want on the map. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm just gonna do that right here by changing the address to... And so instead of having to drag this across the tiles, you just type an address and that image will be dragged to wherever yeah. the address that you had chosen. And I'm just gonna stretch this all the way here, gonna make a little more sense of this image. I should add that you can you can repeat this process as well. Once you've done it, you can go back and realign it as you see fit. Definitely, right? exactly that, it. right. And so, Yeah, and I think that, that sort of the benefit of this too is that um, you know anyone can. I, I always think of emergency situations as being where you need to act quickly, and it doesn't have to be perfect fit. Where if you just had a floor plan from someone, you needed to share it securely. You can upload it, align it, and then share it through Maps Engine. Right, exactly that. Like you know, if you zoomed in into the base map tiles, you'd see more like an empty outline, so it makes more sense if you yeah. had an existing floor plan to kind of share that with yeah. your viewers. All right, and uh, at once the processing is done, you should be able to view that in your um, drafts. And, and basically, anyway, you can use a Maps Engine layer. You're going to be able to add that as a layer or an asset, right? Right. So, yeah. Exactly that. Um, OK. Uh, so let's switch to the Places API now. Um, there's one thing we wanted to call out, which is a sort of a, it, it seems like a small thing, but actually a pretty significant improvement in uh, right. quality of results, right, or relevance, I should say, right. which is IP biasing on mm -hmm. autocomplete. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we have for the autocomplete now is a little enha enhancement that does IP biasing by default. And so let me start with a query right here. I'm just going to dump, dump it into the address bar and run it. And so this query uses autocomplete endpoint to look for suggestions based on the text that I entered, W-A-S-H. Mm -hmm. So it's going to give me suggestions on Washington. So if you look at the results, it starts with Washington, D.C. If I scroll a little towards the bottom, I see Washington Street, San Jose, right. and then Washington Street, Sunnyvale. And that's primarily because we're doing this recording in the Mountain View campus, and these are the nearby locations that have Washington in the address. And to be more specific, your machine that you're making the call from has, a, has an IP address associated with that location, right? Exactly that. Right, so that happens by default. Now, if you wanted to switch that off, you'd remember if you've been using the Places API, uh, there is the additional optional parameters that you can add uh, location and radius. Yeah. So that also does some sort of biasing. So to switch off this IP biasing, you would need to enter 0, 0, 0,0 for the lat long for the location yeah. and radius as 20 million meters. That covers the whole globe. So that is indirectly saying that I don't want to do IP biasing. Yeah. So th I mean, obviously here, the, the thing is a lot of times that uh, d uh, developers or consumers of the API aren't adding those parameters and, and customers might be getting results that don't really make sense based on where they're located. So exactly. this is kind of the first 
a first attempt to be more relevant right. um, in the hopes that you would actually include those two parameters to be more mm -hmm. specific, right? Yep. Okay. Right, so just a quick glance at the results. So now that I've included the um, location and radius parameter to specify that I do not want to do any kind of IP biasing, uh, the first result remains pretty much the same, but if I scroll down, I get Washington, Pennsylvania, Washington, Illinois, which is basically just names of locations, not just streets that are near to where I am based yeah. on IP. Perfect. All right, well, let's uh, wrap it up with the final thing, which is a brand new app for Android, which is the Google Maps Engine mobile app. You want to sort of tell us what that's all about? One of the things I'm really excited about. So with this app, and let me just bring you to where you can download this app, which is in Google Play. Uh, this app is available for Android today. Mm -hmm. And so with the, what, what this app is really is the merging of the existing coordinate app and a new app that supports Maps Engine on the mobile device. OK. So what I'm saying is you can display Map Engine Maps okay. on this app. Yeah. You can display your jobs as a coordinate worker that have been assigned to you. OK. So what this up until now, it was only the um, job ad administrator yeah. who was able to display map engine maps over the coordinate console. But today, the worker, provided he has been given access to those maps, will be able to display the maps and also look at the jobs. And some screenshots very quickly. So this, this is a list of the maps that have been shared with you through maps engine console. Yeah. And this is what the coordinate side of things look like. And so let's say you are working on a job that asks you to fix a broken pipe, you can see the network of pipes that are being stored and served yeah. out of Maps Engine. I've got an even better example. You could take the floor plan you just uploaded, reference it using the image referencing right. tool, and say the corner of this building. There we go. What an amazing example. <laughs> right. But, the, but the, I think the interesting thing here is that you don't have to have Google Maps coordinate. You don't have to have Google Maps Engine. You can have one or the other. You can have neither. You, and the, the app still is functional. It's still a Google-based map. Right, exactly that. And then depending upon who you log in and uh, you authenticate as and are authorized for, you start mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. more options, more data in one place rather than having to switch between apps. Exactly right? that. It's just, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. So I, I tried out last night with a random account, and I was able to access all the public maps that weren't even in my Maps Engine console. So. Oh, actually, it's a great way to experiment yeah. with Maps Engine mobile right there, actually. Right. Log yeah. in with your, just your consumer Gmail account, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. Yeah, and check it out. Well, Ajay, thanks very much. Um, and Thank uh, you, Dylan. Yeah, it's really interesting to see what we've done in the past, uh, past 90 days. And uh, we'll see you next time on What's New in Enterprise Maps.